Well, I don't have much of a plan so far. I do know that I want to create something kind of Christmassy. So I'm pulling out my beginner watercolor palette. Whoops, making some noise with my water. And I have some of my Strathmore 300 watercolor series paper. This is a cold press paper. And we're just gonna do a loose watercolor today. Um, let's see, let's pull out my Princeton Neptune number 10. This is a round brush. And I'll probably use this today. I like to use a larger brush when I'm working looser. But I'm also gonna pull out maybe my six as well. So this will be a kind of live, I'll be talking while I am painting. Hopefully you will enjoy this style tutorial with me. Now when I start my loose watercolor tutorials or paintings, um, this one happens to be a tutorial, I like to look at a lot of different reference photos. I decided to do poinsettias today or poinsettias depending on where you're from and how you say them. Um, and then just kind of glean anatomy really from them and not really going for, sometimes I will work off of a specific flower, but I like to be a little bit more intuitive when I'm working loose. So I am going to kind of map out where things are gonna go. I'm gonna do three poinsettias. I've got one here, just kind of a general circle and I'm going to do the very center just to, I'm not drawing any details. I'm just kind of figuring out placement. Um, this is a larger sheet of paper, so I want to use my space wisely. Um, and occasionally I will kind of draw a little bit of a, like a little arrow coming out. Um, it's just a line, but just to so, show like this is the direction that this flower is going in. And then I think I'm gonna do one more up here, just kind of from the side, so we'll keep it wide. And I like that this is kind of creating a triangular shape. We'll do kind of some greenery down here, maybe something up here. All right, now I'm just going to take a white eraser. I'm just gonna kind of lighten those a little bit. I know that they, you're probably thinking, I can hardly see them. Well, I can see them. So <laughs> I do wanna make it so that I, it's barely there for me. Again, I just drew large circle here smaller circle here and kind of an oval shape here. And then we'll start with our poinsettias. I, like I said, I'm using my beginner palette. So if you need to know more information about what colors are included in here, I will be talking through the colors as I pull them. Um, but I have a whole video where I talk about what types of colors I recommend for my beginner palettes. And I'm pulling out, this is an all purpose brush. It's a size 11 round. And I just like to use this to mix my colors because my higher quality brushes, I prefer to not massage into the paints as much. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to each of these pieces that I have here. All right, um, I think today we're gonna dive into cadmium. I love how bright it is. Although I am gonna pull a little bit of alizarin crimson in here just because it kind of adds a little bit of sophistication. If I had to pick one red that I would use for the rest of my life, it would probably be Alizarin Crimson. Maybe Deep Scarlet by Daniel Smith, just because I do love that one. Um, but that's my go-to. So even when I'm dipping into cadmium, I tend to pull Alizarin Crimson in anyway. Let's see, I think I'm gonna play up the more warmer tones. So you can keep these separate and separate. <laughs> you can keep these separate and um, you know tidy. I don't usually do that when I'm, especially when I'm working loose. Um, if you want more detail and more color definition, that might be a good idea. But again, I'm not going to for this piece. Um, since I'm going a little warmer with the poinsettia itself, the bloom itself, I'm probably going to go a little more cool tone with the greenery. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm pulling from my sap green and my ultramarine. So I might do this and then end up just adding some of the red into it and go with a warmer tone. But I kind of like to have a mix of the warm and the cool tones in there. And I'm not worried about dirty water. I know a lot of people worry about it. I kind of like it because it gives me more sophisticated color palette on autopilot. I don't have to play around with it too much. Okay. 
Now we're going to take just a quick look at poinsettias. There are a lot of really leaves. If you ever looked at the way it's grown, it'll have the stem and basically leaves come out and they fall behind. So um, the flower part is really just leaves that have turned red. And so they will be, at least that is my, I, probably <laughs> if you talk to a biologist, they would have more information, but just from observing, that's what I see. So a lot of, they have the um, center of the flower and then kind of these leaves that have turned red coming out and kind of cascading down the stem. And so that's kind of what we're going to try to capture today. I am going to dive into this alizarin crimson. I just, I like it. It feels a little more Christmassy, but if we add this cadmium yellow in there, maybe we can kind of get a happy tone that we like. Just kind of find a nice cheery red, whatever feels like a Christmassy red for you. And then let's dive in. So I'm going to start here. So it's farthest from my dominant hand. And when you're working loose, you are usually working pretty quickly. Um, and so I don't want to have to wait for the paint to dry before I'm um, moving on to the next piece. So I'm not starting with the stamen or the very centers of the flowers. I'm just going to create these pieces or these leaves, these shapes coming out. And to create these shapes, I'm just, let's do, let's see, this is going to be foreshortened a little bit. So let's go out. I'm pushing down with my brush and then coming up to get to this tip. And don't feel like, like I did say, that looser watercolors move faster. It does not mean that this is a race or anything. So don't feel like you have to move really quickly in order to do a good job with this. So nice and steady. You can keep that negative space that I just got rid of if you want, or you can get rid of it like I did. And I'm just going to keep working my way around, leaving lots of negative space in between for the petals that will be layered on later. I'm going to let those dry a little bit, I think, maybe not. No, let's go, I'm going to add just a little bit of water, so no more pigment, and then I'm just going to kind of tap it on my palette. That's just to make sure that I have, I don't have too much, that gives me a little bit more control. But I do want there to be less pigment and more water um, as like a ratio on my brush um, than there was before. So now I'm going to do this piece that would be kind of in the background. I'm going to start actually from the tip and move forward. I'm going to allow it to flick out a little bit, just kind of for fun. And I don't want to completely get rid of some of that negative space that's in there. Let's see how I kept this white line. That's the negative space that I'm talking about. With loose watercolor flowers, it's very important that you keep the loose or keep the negative space because that will help to tell the story. That helps communicate to the viewers what's going on. It's kind of like keeping a pencil outline, but instead you're just being a very resourceful artist. So that one's a little bigger than I had originally planned, um, but Let's just go with it. So I'm going to keep building these exterior petals and making sure that they are lighter than the ones in front that I place down first. You can work lighter to darker. Um, and if I was working in a more detailed, realistic fashion, that is 100% what I would do. But when I'm working looser, I usually like to I want to have the composition defined and really have the emphasis defined before I start to dive into some of the things that may fall into the background that are a secondary element. 
So again, I'm really actually kind of going in with an almost clean brush, grabbing this because I want this to be even lighter. It's going to fall back here. That's too dirty. Remember that it's easier to add pigment than to take away. And so don't be afraid to let it get really, really light. Just let it kind of fade in there. And I don't really have a plan for where the petals are gonna go. I'm just kind of trying to find some good balance in here. I know the general structure and anatomy that these flowers should follow. And so I'm weighing more heavily on that than, you know, how does this exact flower that I'm looking at look? Um, I'm not looking at a specific flower for one thing. Now, one thing I didn't do is leave a lot of space for the stamen that we'll add in eventually. So while this is still wet, I'm going to take my brush, clean it off, and then I'm going to kind of really make sure that there's no excess water on it. I'm just going to pick up where I think that will end up going. So it's okay if there's a little bit of the red there in the background, but I don't want it to be too much. So again, we're just picking up a little bit of extra. All right, next we're going to dive into this next flower. Again, we're pushing down on the barrel and then nice and light. Sometimes I'll twist it just a little bit to make sure it gets nice and tight the way that I want it to. So again, these are gonna be nice and dark because they're at the center. They're going to be closest to the eyes of our viewer. So that dark color automatically makes it feel like it's coming closer. I'm gonna try for a foreshortened petal. It can be really difficult when they're supposed to be so pointy. And I have a video on foreshortened petals coming soon for drawing them, which will help you with the painting process. And if that is out, I will have it linked down below. Um, if you're watching this the day it comes out, then it's not out yet. <laughs> Still have some editing to do there. All right, I really like how this one's turning out, which isn't unusual for me to prefer my second over my first, so maybe I should have been more careful with my warm-up. Let's overlap this, and because this is nice and light, I'm just kind of massage it gently a little bit, and that will pick up that pigment again. Kind of building these out. This one, it's farther back, it's tucked behind, so I'm going to draw it, paint it lighter than the ones before it. Now I do like to have some bleeding in my loose watercolors, and bleeding just where the colors kind of mix a little bit. So I'm gonna start adding some green in here. And I'm gonna allow it to touch this wet petal See if we can get a little bit of a bleed. Just a little bit. Might be a little too dry now. Even if I just need to add a little bit of red in here. You can kind of fake the bleed if you didn't time it quite right. It's 
So I ended up, in case you haven't noticed, going with kind of the warmer green and just sticking with something a little bit more cohesive. Somewhat by accident because my brush was dirty enough, but I like it. They're contrasting colors and so sometimes they clash when they're together, but having the same underlying tone of the warmer colors kind of helps. I'm gonna let this one be lighter. Just be kind of like a little bit of an afterthought. I'm gonna make it bigger. And this color now that I'm using, that's on my brush right now, what little pigment is left, it's very neutral. So red and brown together, or red and green together make brown. And if you're really good at mixing, they can make black. Um, so I, it's kind of turning into a brown as it fades. And that will, again, really help it to fall back. So those neutral colors will fall back. I'm just kind of fixing a bloom. So these that jagged edge, this jagged edge, that's called a bloom. And that's when you add pigment to a something that is partially dry or a lot of wet pigment to something that's partially dry. And it's it's fine. It's not like a good thing or a bad thing, but it is just part of painting. Um, I don't love them. <laughs> sometimes I use them strategically. Sometimes I don't want them. So if it's a more aggressive bloom like that one was, I'll just, after it's pretty much dried, I will just kind of massage it like I showed you with my with a damp brush, and that'll help it to kind of soften a little bit. Um, so this is a bloom. I don't mind that so much. This is a bloom, this right here. Um, again, they're tools, you can use them, but I didn't really want it. <laughs> I didn't really want it in my that place. All right, since these two are overlapping. Right now, they kind of blend into one another. I don't want that. <laughs> so this one I've decided is behind by default because it's underlapped. So I'm going to lighten it by just picking up some of the pigment while it's still wet. It will dry a little bit lighter than it appears while it is wet. And so if they're the same while they're wet, it'll probably be lighter, but I do want to make sure of that. And again, it's easier to put pigment, put more pigment on than to pick pigment up after it's dried. So this is just bath tissue. Nothing fancy in this studio. It's more of our paint and I'm just going to, I want to have Let's see. I'm just going to draw where I would have the stem real quick just to help me visualize. This is where the center is going to go. Sometimes when you're building, <laughs> it's harder to do that just off the cuff. And so it's not a bad thing to kind of block in where everything is going. So if this is the base of that petal, then I'm going to go up a little bit. And this should be the darkest one because it's in front. And bring it up. We're seeing the tip. You can see inside just a little bit. All right, I like where that's going. All right, we've got green down here. Let's add some green up with this guy. We need a little bit more of the green. So I'm gonna pull in our sap green just a touch of our ultramarine. Probably don't need the ultramarine, but we used it initially. So just in case it's influencing our color at all down here, I do want to still include it. Again, even if it's just a touch, it might be the thing, you never know for sure. It might be the thing that's adding that little touch of sophistication to your piece. Um, so I like to include it if I've ever included it at all. See. 
maybe. I think I actually want one up here a little bit, but it will be so far in the background. We want it to be nice and light. It's getting red. Probably my water is a little too dirty <laughs> at this point. And again, just with the bath tissue, I'm just lightening this, picking up the extra pigment. So the paper's already stained a little bit, um, but it won't be too much because we already have, um, because I picked up all the excess. Okay, I'm gonna deepen this one just a touch. So I can see it's kind of confusing. So we'll make this one a little darker and then we'll add a little hint of a one, a petal there just to help tell the story. Okay, so this is my six taking my lemon yellow and I'm going to mix it in with my cadmium yellow. Um, lemon yellow is a very lemony yellow. It's a cool toned yellow while cadmium is very warm toned. And so mixing them together I feel like we get this nice goldeny yellow tone, more this mid-tone yellow. And I'm just going to kind of put some dots down. It won't show up over the petals that I've already placed, but that's okay for what I have planned next. We will be going over it with a little bit of this liquid metal. It's basically gold paint. This is from Paper Fashion. I don't believe she's selling it anymore, but I'll try and find something similar and have it linked down below. But this is what I have in my collection. And I'm just gonna take a little bit off of the cap here. And again, this is my black tulip watercolor brush in the size 10. So it's bigger than I probably would use, but I don't like to use my really nice watercolor brushes for something that is a little more experimental. And here I'm just gonna go over those pieces that I just put down. They should be a little bit wet still. And so this metallic will bleed just a touch, um, which I, I'm hoping it will do. Um, I am going to go in with my Artify mixing brush again, and we're just gonna mix a nice dark color. So I'm gonna take my Ultramarine, I'm going to take my Alizarin Crimson, mix those two together, and then the opposite of purple, the complement of purple is yellow. So I'm going to then add some Cadmium Yellow Hue and that way we'll get a very nice, dark, neutral shade. All right, so we have our nice neutral tone from our beginner palette, and I'm just gonna mix some up, and I'm gonna take it kind of underneath where some of that gold is, just to help kind of define it a little bit. And I probably should have done this instead of the yellow, but we're figuring things out as we go, especially with... All right, so we're still looking at kind of some wet paint, but you can sort of see some of the shimmer that's in there from that metallic paint. Just a little something extra, a little something fun. Okay, so now I'm going to step back. These areas are really dark, and then everything else is kind of light. So I'm going to deepen a few elements now, I'm going to take my size 10 again, and I'm going to just reactivate some of this water. I'm going to be adding some glazes. And a glaze is just a light layer of wet pigment. So not enough water that it will reactivate the paint underneath it, but 
enough pigment that it makes a difference. And again, not a ton of either. Because now there's nothing in the background here, I am gonna add a lighter petal back here. You know, we don't want to lose the depth even though we're telling a better story. We just want to make sure that the story makes sense or why tell it. So yeah, I think we're going to call this one done for now. I hope that you enjoyed this style of painting tutorial where I'm just kind of talking along with you. Um, if you enjoy loose watercolors in general, um, I have a full playlist of different flowers that I've done over the past couple of years, as well as two videos of quick tips for creating loose watercolor flowers, which if you haven't done a lot of painting, that is probably the best place to start. Um, again, I hope that you enjoyed this poinsettia tutorial. I hope that you were able to try it yourself and that you are able to create something beautiful for Christmas with it. And until next time, happy painting.